What is going on you guys? My name is Cisco and this is Boaz and today we are going to be talking about helmets and airsoft. What are you wearing? They put this on me against my will. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you enjoy watching our content, show us some love by liking the video and ring the bell to make sure you get notified whenever we drop new content. We appreciate you all. Hey, what's going on guys? Boaz here and we're with our thick daddy Cisco. And we're back here to discuss our helmet setups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, so uh, why don't we go ahead and just start off with, you know, why do we run helmets in Airsoft? Okay. So I would think the first and main reason why you run that helmet in airsoft is for protection, right? Whether it be banging your head or just literally protecting your noggin from BBs. Um, having a helmet is really great uh, as overall head protection. Adding on to the goggles and lower mesh mask, it gives you uh, a little bit more, I guess, bravery when you are playing. So you aren't as afraid to, to take a hit to the face uh, knowing that you have that extra security. Yeah, personally for me, the only, I think the two main reasons, to be honest, of me running a helmet is number one is, again, like, hitting your head on, like, yep. small doorways or small entries, uh, entryways. Uh, I remember a long time ago, I went to, like, a BB Wars event at that abandoned water park. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember, at that time, I didn't run a helmet. I just wore a baseball cap. Ooh. And we were trying to fit through the small entryway to, like, flank an enemy squad. And... I ended up, boom, bump, bumping my head against it. Cause it wasn't a door, it was just like a hole in the wall, you know? Yeah. At the moment I was like, okay, well, I need to run a helmet. So yep. is that, and, <laughs> and, and the number two is uh, for mounting night vision. Okay. So when I'm running night vision goggles, uh, you have a very secure mount. I hear that. Yeah. Okay, so why don't we go over the helmets that we decided to run or to show today? Sure. So why don't you go ahead and just tell us what exactly this helmet is and why you picked it out. Okay, this is the Tactical Crusader IBH helmet. The reason I run this one is actually because I bought a mystery box from Airsoft Chai oh. and I won it through there. It was actually this was back in the day. I think I got it for like $20. So the helmet itself I think retails for $40. So uh, I doubled my, my winnings and I needed the helmet at the time. This is when I first started getting into recording my own gameplay footage. So uh, I decided to jerry rig one of the GoPro mounts onto the included night vision goggles. And then originally this comes in OD green, but I spray painted it a little bit of tan just to help blend in with uh, the other colors of what I wear and the natural environment. And of course I do have the morale patches just for fun. Yeah, I think the spray paint job over here, I think it looks really cool. Thank you, appreciate uh, it. I think it, it turned out really well and then you can kind of see all the scuff marks and like, oh, yeah. throughout the years of when you ran into things. And I think it looks really cool, it has a lot of character. Definitely. Yeah. On top of that, um, for helmets, I do use it as uh, an easier way to mount like face protection. So uh, this is the Bravo mesh mask that mounts directly onto the arc rail here. And this is much easier to take off or deploy, I guess, compared to having it, having it on my face and then putting the helmet on because then I have to take everything off versus unclipping it really quick and then I'll be able to breathe a little bit easier. And then for the players that are either looking into maybe getting a helmet or just learning about helmet systems, yeah, can you elaborate more about this arc rail system and what it is and what it does? Okay, so the arc rail on, on the side here allows you to uh, mount different types of accessories, including like, op not optics, but more like eye protection, right? Um, so obviously right here, I do have uh, a little navigation light. There are more powerful lights for you to use for identification. You can also mount um, ear protection and uh, like hearing aids, just like Boaz does have here on, on his helmet. I'm not sure what other type of uh, accessories there are available for the arc rails, but I mean, anything that helps you in the fight, uh, you know, is obviously just an accessory that's needed. <laughs> now, I do want to say though, point out that there are Picatinny to arc rail adapters, meaning that you could, this. yeah, you can slide a Picatinny mount onto an arc rail. So let's say if you don't want to spend like a bunch of money on a dedicated arc rail flashlight, just have a flashlight lying around. Yep. Right, technically, you could put on an adapter and mount a flashlight and you, yep. have a, you have a headlight. But, what, but like you said, you said optics earlier. Technically, yeah. I mean, if you want to get, you could. Uh, you yeah. could mount like a T1. If you <laughs> my, to, yeah. or my favorite is uh, the broom handle foregrip. So you can you can mess around the teammates and like move their heads around. Oh, that's like, uh, where are they at? Over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Other ways you can mount accessories is through the Velcro uh, on the helmet as well. 
Um, like I said before, I just have mine with more owl patches. I'd say for $40, I think the IBH helmet still looks really cool. Yeah. Uh, it, it is, I mean, in real life, it is a bit of an older system. So if yeah. you look at the night vision mount, it's not your typical shroud mount. Uh, yeah. It is old, but I think it still looks really cool. I still love the IBH helmet. I love the texturing on it. Yeah, definitely. I think I think the way the light hits it, it's not super reflective. And also since you give it like a matte paint job, yep. I think it really kind of dulls everything down so you don't stick out like a sore thumb on a hot, cloudy, like cloudless day. Yeah, like for this one partic in particular, it does have the accessories that you could use it in modern times. But before, um, this one wouldn't come with the arc rails or the NVG, so it would just be a basic bump protection helmet. One thing that I would have to say about the IBH that is a little bit um, off-putting to me is the temple protection here uh, where the strap, the chin strap mounts. It can interfere with uh, some goggle systems, so if you're using too wide of a goggle system, uh, it can prevent it from creating a full seal on your face. So be wary if you want to consider this one. Those of you who are DIY, I mean, nothing like a little Dremel job can't fix, right? True, very true, yeah. easily done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the helmet that I'm running right now. So I am running a Lancer Tactical Maritime helmet. Okay. Yeah, so it's pretty much like those like fast helmets, the ones that look like the bike helmets or whatnot with the little yeah. holes on the side. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone on their mom, everyone the grandma has one, you know? Yep. But uh, yeah, so that is a helmet underneath. Uh, so, but I am running a woodland right now. It's a woodland helmet cover. Sometimes I wear a multicam one depending on what outfit I'm running. Right currently, I'm running woodland. So one thing that you will notice when you buy these helmets is that they're actually pretty shiny. So what I see most people do again, they either rattle can it, they spray paint on yep. this, but it's a very smooth surface. And so I like having a helmet cover on it because first of all, like it looks cool. Absolutely. Second of all, yeah, it it basically will make you less reflective to light. And so since you know, we're in Southern California right now, right? So most of the time, it's hot sunny days. Mm -hmm. you know, the sun is beating down on you and you know, you could you could basically stick all the sort of them on the field. So I think the helmet helps a little bit on that. Uh, over here on the front, I do have, I think it's a Lancer Tactical, is it a Rhino mount or some kind of some kind of shroud mount? Yeah, it, yeah I, I think it's a, a replica of yeah, the Wilcox, Wilcox, mount. Wilcox mount, yeah. So, uh, very affordable actually. I believe I picked it up for maybe like 16 or $17. Yeah, for it being like a, like a yeah. metal one was a yeah, yeah. really and good deal. So that's one thing you should look out for guys in a helmet is if you guys are planning to run stuff like GoPros or night vision goggles, they're pretty front heavy. And so you don't want a plastic mount bracket that will eventually bend or break on you. So always look for a metal one. I, I learned that lesson the hard way. Yeah, so I do have it for night vision use. And let's see, on the side over here, I am running uh, these Peltor range guards. Yep, so, uh, yeah. this mm -hmm. so these are actually very affordable for ear protection. They, they are hearing aids as well. Most of the time, if you use like cheap generic earmuffs or ear protection, yep. you know, everything's like super foggy and like muted. But these have microphones on the side, so you can actually turn them on and it'll amplify the ambient sound around you and actively cancel out gunshots. Uh, specific for me, I, I bought these because uh, we were going to Milsom West, and Milsom West is an event that actively promotes people to use uh, blink fire mm. uh, weapons. And so uh, these came in really handy because uh, our squad leader one night he was running a real steel blank fire AR. Oh dang! Yeah, and he was and he was opening up. He was open firing right next to me. Oh yeah, dang! Yeah. So this this came in clutch because it was loud. Oh yeah. Yep. And I think the coolest feature though about these is that. I think they retail for maybe around like forty dollars, I believe, online. Yeah. Yeah. So they're they're relatively they're inexpensive. Yeah. You just pinch your pennies a little bit for that. But they have an auto shut off feature. So use a AAA battery. So very easy to source. And after a couple hours, if you forget to turn them off, the auto shut off. That one I didn't so know. So it saves your batteries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was great. Yeah. I love it. Great. And mounted to these, I believe these are either the Emerson or the TMC yeah, adapters. I yeah. I, yeah. I'd say they're pretty affordable. To be honest, I think I'm gonna save up and buy the real thing. Yeah, just cause, just to get the extra durability, and you know, I, I don't want to have to really risk, especially if I'm real steel shooting. Yep. I don't want to end up risking my hear, my, my hearing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just just to save a few bucks. So I'm I'm saving up money for that right now. Yeah, for sure. But just for yourself, yeah, I'm using these uh, repro ones. Nice. And on the back, I have over here my V light. Yep. Yeah, and this one is a red one, I believe. Yep, it's a red one. So you got the you got the sustained. You got the blinking one. And, Turn it off. Our, our boys, uh, Zayas and uh, Taylor. Yep. Yeah, we usually run uh, Milson games and like field games together. And at night, we thought this would be a good idea to identify for friendlies, but we realized no, nah, we're just gonna stick out. Yeah. So mainly just on you for looks, maybe for emergency situations, like if we're not really airsofting anymore and we need to find each other. Yeah. Maybe this will come in handy, but I've never really used it. Yeah. And of course, all around here, I ha I just have patches. So I have a 
South Korean patch because I'm Korean. <laughs> and uh, I have my call sign over here. Chief. Yeah, chef. My name is Jeff. Chef. Chef. Chief. Chef. chef. My bad. Inside of my helmet right here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it right now, but I'm just using the standard blocking little su suspension. Oh, system. yeah. They, they are pretty good for what they are. I believe for reproduction helmets, not too bad. I am considering maybe getting a better one out there if it exists, but I doubt it. But I mean, it works. And uh, one thing that and they're really bothering me, especially when I run night vision because it's just so front heavy, yep. is that uh, the pads. So the stock pads, yeah. eventually they will wear out. So I've had this helmet for about like two plus years okay. and eventually the, pad, the foam pads will wear out. So I, I recently switched over to the Condor uh, upgraded foam pads over here. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's great. So it comes in like a huge pack. There's like a ton of them. It's supposed to like line helmets without, without this harness system. Yeah. So it's supposed to really like cushion and cradle your head, but since I'm using this this little suspension system, uh, well, I don't need that. So I'm only using like one, two, three, yeah, four out of like the ten pads that they give you. Yeah. And it really they really cushion your head. It's great. So I don't have any more like migraines or headaches from like running around with nods all night. And that set I think is like eighteen bucks normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's very affordable. Yeah, because yeah. I was I was thinking about getting like the Team Wendy pads or whatnot because I yeah, have a those lot super of great things. Ones. Very expensive, and I don't think it's worth it for an airsoft helmet to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and on and I think one thing the one thing I would add to this helmet maybe should be a, like a counterweight pouch, just to yeah. balance off the weight. Yeah, it's just that way I'm not fighting my my yeah. neck is fighting to stay up all the time. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much my helmet, my go-to helmet setup. I think. Uh, I've learned a lot of lessons over the years growing up. You know, I did start out with like those bicycle style helmet, fast helmets in yeah. the very beginning, just ran it without anything just because I thought it looked cool. But eventually I started to learn the functionalities of all the different helmets, Yeah, like helmet accessories and you know what to look for. And yeah, I think I'm pretty satisfied for now. Um, I have yet to take this real steel shooting. So once I get my real adapter, arc real adapters for my, my, uh, my sure, shoulders. You just test yeah. these. Yeah, I'll just test these out. Yeah. <laughs> I'll test these out on the range? No, yeah, t test this mount out, see if it'll do it. Bro, bro. <laughs> I don't know, man. This one is set up a little bit differently than my casual helmet, just because I catered this one more toward getting gameplay footage for Milsim games or longer events. Of course, up front, I have the GoPro mount onto the night vision. And on the back, I did have the counterweight pouch, um, oh, which nice. is what I was going to ask why mm -hmm. you didn't run one because mm -hmm. you're one of the MVGs. So I took the weights out of this and I actually use this as a storage for an external battery to to mount or to connect to the yeah, GoPro. That, that's very popular. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, honestly, I just use the the patches uh, that are on the helmet uh, to help keep the wiring like tucked away. Mm -hmm. So that helps you out a lot for those who want to record long style gameplay. And then I do have the uh, Peltor range guards on mine as well. Uh, unfortunately, mine aren't cool like yours, so they don't rotate. But they do uh, a very good job of holding them uh, up against my ear and giving me enough protection. I haven't had any issues where they came off or they've let in any normal sound. As of recent, I have been wearing helmets just because of how heavy they are, but I've been regretting it every time because I'm normally getting shot in the head. <laughs> I feel like there's like a Murphy's Law principle when it comes yep. to wearing helmets and air stuff or any protective gear to be honest. Oh yeah, where, I agree. Yeah, there'll be days where I'll be like, I don't want to run my helmet. And I'm too lazy, just put on a baseball cap or whatnot just to keep the sun out of my eyes. Yep. And then that those moments, bam, I get shot in the head. Mm. But then I'm like, you know what? Screw it, put a helmet on. I Then I get shot in like the fingertips or something. My head's <laughs> completely fine. Yeah, I mean, it goes with anything, man. Like, play carriers with gloves. Just mm -hmm. the moment I don't wear them, is, is, that's when I get shot. Overall, I do believe um, they aren't really essential, but they are very effective uh, in airsoft, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's all, you know, your personal preference. If you're completely fine without running a helmet, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily do it if it wasn't for all the, the benefits of the helmet. Yep. I think we have very affordable yet very effective you know, systems. Uh, obviously for some people it might not be affordable to get all at once. At least for my helmet, you know, this is accumulation of years of playing and years of like learning. And so, you know, it, it just started out with me just running a, a bare slick helmet. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, I want this. And so I buy like, you know, one piece at a time, one piece at a time. And eventually you add, end up with the whole system. Yep. Yeah, so uh, I know it might be a little overwhelming, especially to like all the beginner, beginner players who see all those like super like complicated kind of like gear setups and stuff like that. But uh, again, it all just comes from experience of just playing, uh, years of playing and you know, yep. seeing how, how other people do it and you try experimenting things on your own. As you add to it piece by piece, um, you know, like it's not, it's not too hard. Yep.
Exactly. I, I do agree that gear is catered toward you specifically. Mm -hmm. Your helmet is gonna be the same as my helmet. Mm -hmm. And same thing for like, even my rifle. My rifle is gonna be the same way that you run your rifle. And same thing on my half, uh, where it started off as just a base helmet, then going into uh, upgrading to what you need. Mm -hmm. One more thing that I like to add when running helmet setups, I would highly recommend picking up like a balaclava of some sort. Mm. Um, I know I know most people like you, you run mesh masks. I personally do not run a full lower face oh. mask. Um, actually, what I did was, uh, I believe, I forget which company, but they do sell like a small rectangular piece that just covers your mouth. Oh, we but actually before, sell them here. Oh, nice, yeah. But before then, I, I just cut up my, my old mesh mask. Like, okay. Like the, the ear protectors or whatever. Yep. I, cut that out, I cut that out and I just stuck it right in my mouth just to protect my teeth because mm. that's what's important. Yep. And I just slip it right underneath this balaclava. But the important part of running a balaclava with the helmet, in my opinion, is first of all, if you have like longer hair like me, uh, it really helps manage all the hair so like no tangles or whatnot. Mm. And Second of all, the sweat. This will be the first layer that gets soaked with sweat. So you're not sweating up your helmet, so you don't get like soggy, like really smelly pads. Hmm. I should have consulted Boaz because I cut off my ponytail for, <laughs> for, for one of those reasons because it was yeah. hard to get everything on top of my head. One of my favorite things to do is, especially with like the, the super thin, um, the very wispy kind of balaclava, like the yep. classic army ones that we have. Yeah, yeah. I dip them in cold water and I okay. put it over it and, it and it really cools you down. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Hmm. I'm gonna need to look into that now. But I have no more hair. <laughs> yeah, thanks for sticking around for a discussion of our tactical helmet setups. Let us know in the comments actually what you want us to go over next. And if you guys have any really cool helmet builds or setups yeah. yeah go ahead and just yeah send it to us man because we're we're always looking to see what, how other people do it yeah tag and, us on ig mm -hmm. uh, airsoftgi.com dot spelled out and we'll share it around we'll tag you and yeah we'd like to see what you guys run um and tell us how you think about how we run ours uh, as bo has said don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys later peace